Here's an interesting one for you guys today. This is an NVMe and this is from Sanzang Master. I've actually reviewed some of their products before, but typically they are docks, like USB docks, HDMI docks, and that for laptops and for Macs and that kind of system. However, it looks like they have an NVMe. You can see here that it is a Gen 4 drive, 7,000 megabytes a second, so that does denote upper end Gen 4 drive. Of course, it's an NVMe M.2. I'm not going to be able to do super long-term testing where, you know, I blast this thing for six months or something like that to see how, you know, what the legs on the lap, what, what the legs on the device is. But I will do some extensive testing in this review here, see how this thing performs when it's being slammed, when it's full, when it's empty, and just kind of see what kind of performance we can get out of it. Uh, I will be using this probably in a couple different devices for a long period of time, you know, various different things. So over time, if there is issues with it, I can come back and comment. I am gonna test it in my desktop. You could test this in a laptop, you know, kind of leave it naked like that, or potentially you could maybe fit that in a laptop. It just depends. But most cases, you're gonna put it kind of naked in a laptop. That's fine. I'm gonna test it with its own heatsink built in inside of my desktop. I have pretty good airflow on my desktop, so uh, it should be a relatively fair test. It's not like I run some microscopic, you know, super hot system or anything like that that would give it, basically penalize it. It's almost illegible. There we go. So that's the first chip there. Looks like they do use a ball grid array. So if you get a higher spec one, like this is 512 gigabytes. If you get one terabyte, for example, then they would just solder two more chips on there. So that's fine. What's the controller there? Maxio controller. Yeah, so you get a Maxio controller. Not sure what brand these uh, chips are. And if I do, then I'll put the second one on. Uh, no, it is actually touching. So one patch seems to do the trick there. Uh, if not, I can always put another one, but it does seem to be pinching. Okay, we can see the NVMe down there. This is my system sitting on the bottom there. So it should get decent airflow directly from the front fan there, and that will feed it direct airflow to basically go over the NVMe and out. So I'm giving it a nice fair chance here. Okay, so here's my test parameters. You can see the Sanzang uh, NVMe there. It looks like it actually is identified as that, which is interesting. Very good. Brand new, as you can see there, PCI 4, etc. Uh, we will come through here, we'll check the temperatures. So we have our temperatures here. We can also check it in here, of course. And then we also have our reads and all that too. Primarily, I just want to see how it performs. So we'll first do our test here on drive E, check the benchmarks, we'll do auto, check the temperatures. And then what I'll do is I'll just start seeing how it uh, performs with real world transfers. We'll fill it up or run the right benchmarks again, so. Okay, here's our first run. We can see temperature is okay. It looks like it probably got hot for a moment there, but that's fine. Uh, we can see here it actually peaked, absolute peak was 67, and it looks like it was averaging about 55, which is fine, it's at 50 now. So I guess idle in my system is about 50. So to be honest, that's fine. You really don't want them to get too hot, but I mean, I slammed it with two big benchmarks there, pretty much just went right through them back to back. You can see here the speeds are good, right? They, they always say like 7,000, but that's about what I'd expect out of this drive here. And the same with idle benchmark, it's looking pretty good. Reads at about 6,000 gigabytes per second just shy of 5,000 or so in writes. Okay, so that's gonna get it pretty much full. So we're just gonna go like that there and we're just gonna monitor if it drops down. That's the main thing here. If the cache runs out, it'll drop down, probably basically tank, sit there for a minute or two, then go back up, come back down, come back up, come back down. Yeah, look, that's a really good writing speed there. The drive sending data is basically as good as you can get, P41. Um, that's still going fast even when it drops down it's still technically going down to like 800 to a thousand yeah recovered so it's not didn't crash it didn't uh the cache didn't run out and didn't crash down to zero so we might be doing okay here okay we're just gonna let it finish it's getting close there so it looks like you know it started off very fast two to three gigabytes a second and it's dropped down between 200 to 500 or so but i still consider that pretty fast usually it looks like it's probably doing pretty well i mean it's very rare for me to find a drive that can right at three gigabytes a second all the way across till it's completely full without any form of drop off. But we've had no drops down to zero um, where, you know, just basically tanked and then sat there. You get that on like QLC drives. You especially get that on drives like this Crucial P3 and Crucial P3 Plus where it'll write for a while, come across, and then it will tank right down to zero. It'll sit there for like a, a while actually, you know, five to 10 seconds, then it will come back up and it'll go right back down. You can watch my review on that. Um, and that performance is unacceptable realistically. This one's doing pretty well here. 
Um, again, I don't have some behemoth heat sink on it. You could def I could definitely put a bigger heat sink on it in the system and it would probably cool perform better to be honest, but that's fine. We'll just use it as a stock. Uh, cause this is probably what it would be like in something like a laptop. So that's pretty good. Extremely full drive. That's about as full as I would ever fill a drive. Let's run the tests again. I do expect the performance to go down, but hopefully it won't just absolutely tank. There's not really much space to write anymore. So it's probably going to be, yeah, obviously a lot slower. It's incredibly full, but the reads maintain very good. And again, we are very full, right? Very full. So, I mean, that's kind of to be expected. It's doing a pretty good job here. You know, if we kill off some of this here now, Yep, and as you can see here, when I cleared up some space, the writes went right back up. It's not really a cache issue or anything like that. So, I mean, that's that. I don't really need to do much more in terms of the Senzang uh, NVMe here. It seems good, right? The speeds are good, right? We were getting, really, you can see right here, really good speeds. Reading around 6,000 megabytes a second, that's about what I expect. Writing around 4,800 to 5,000, that's, again, what I expected of some of the highest end drives you can get there. Very good speeds. Temperatures are fine. Right? I just have that tiny baby little heat sink in there. If you put it in a laptop or something, a lot of times they have heat sinks to actually bring heat into the bottom of the laptop itself, or they'll have a bigger heat sink. But the one that comes with it does a decent enough job, to be honest, it's fine. Uh, my motherboard has large heat sinks, so I could really get those temperatures down if I put it under a very large heat sink. I'm pretty happy with this drive. I don't know if the longevity on the drive is gonna be fantastic, right? Is this thing gonna last for, I don't know, 10 years, I have no clue. But from what I've tested from this brand, the Senzang Master, I've done some docs on that from them, and they all seem quite good. Uh, and it looks like they're using, you know, good controllers, Maxio and that, and overall good quality components. So this is a pretty good drive, I would say. So, I mean, NVMe prices are going up, right? Prices are going up quite a bit. <sighs> Storage is getting expensive. So if you can now buy into one of these brands here, like Senzang Master here, and save yourself some money, and it seems like it's good quality, I think it's actually a pretty solid buy, realistically.